Hello, I'm Jamil Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books, Etiquette the Least You Need to Know and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. If you're interested in my books, please make sure to email me at infojamilmasaiva.com. I'll link it down below as well in the description box. If you are new to my channel, here I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. If you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm delighted to see you here. Today's video is dedicated to something that I've been requested to do for a really long time, and that is how to speak elegantly, eloquently, and confidently. So without further ado, let's get started. The first tip to becoming an eloquent and elegant speaker is to expand your vocabulary. What I mean by that is that when you are talking and you are able to use different kind of adjectives and transition words in your daily conversation, that makes you sound more elegant and eloquent immediately. In order to expand your vocabulary, make sure that you do daily readings. And the daily readings should be on different kind of topics. Because when we limit ourselves to only one genre of reading, we tend to incorporate more of the vocabulary of that particular genre. In order to diversify your vocabulary, you have to include readings from different kind of topics. Reading alone, however, will not help you to incorporate these new words into your daily vocabulary. What you have to do after you have encountered a new word while reading a book or perhaps an article is while reading it in the context, try to understand it in the context that it was used. And then throughout the day, attempt to use that word at least three times in your conversation if that's applicable. Or at least within that first week of learning the word, make sure to use it on a daily basis so that that word becomes part of your daily vocabulary. There are so many words that we see every day online when reading, but sometimes those words never make it to our daily vocabulary. To make it part of your vocabulary, you have to use them as often as you can. This is particularly important when it comes to adjectives and transition words, because truly nothing makes our speech richer than using varied kind of adjectives. Let's say instead of just saying beautiful, you can say pleasing, charming, appealing, um, good looking, beautiful, pretty. There's so many different words that could be used to describe that one particular feature. So the more diversified are, is your adjective um, vocabulary and your transition words, the richer your speech is going to be. Number two is managing the volume of your speech. So if you are someone who probably on a daily basis speaks on a volume that's typically considered high and you have gotten some feedback about being a loud speaker, you have to be consciously putting effort into lowering the volume of your natural daily speech. Of course, given the context of where you are, if you are somewhere where you have to increase the volume to be heard, it's natural that you have to increase the volume. But other times, even when you're speaking in front of a huge crowd, the trick is not to increase the volume of your speech, but rather to lower it so that you can make the audience calm down and therefore listen to you. This is something that is often taught by a lot of TED talkers, by a lot of uh, public speakers, that in order to grasp the attention of the audience, you don't have to increase the volume of your speech, which is counterintuitive. You actually have to lower it when you lower the tone of your voice, what happens is that people calm down, they go silent, and they start paying attention to you. So if you want to be an eloquent, confident, and elegant speaker, then work consciously on lowering the volume of your speech, obviously to appropriate content. You don't want to be whispering things, but you want to speak on a volume where people have to quiet down so that they can listen to you. Number three is pace the speed of your speech. If you are someone who tends to speak really, really slowly, then what you have to do, especially if you're going for a job interview or maybe you're doing an elevator pitch, you have to you know, give your idea, your proposal, and there's a limited amount of time that people have to listen to you, what you have to do is be conscious about the speed of your speech and try to step it up a little bit because listeners, they tend to get bored. They tend to get um, their attention gets drifted away. So you want to retain their attention. Therefore, you have to speed up your speech a little bit so that you, your speech could be more dynamic. However, if you're someone who tends to speak 
very very fast you kind of swallow some words that translates into being not confident that you are trying to hide something that you're not very confident in what you're saying um, you're perhaps someone who's always in a rush and impatient so what you have to do is again put conscious effort into taking little pauses between the words and trying to incorporate silence into what you're saying because when you take pauses and when you take little silent breaks that makes your message even more powerful number four is do not end your sentences on a high pitch note what i mean by that is high pitch note could be translated as a question mark at the end of a sentence so if you're reading something uh, try to read it out loud and see how you're going to end the sentence when the sentence is questioning something you end it on a high pitch note women tend to do that even when they are giving some statements some positive statements uh, it undermines your credibility it doesn't make you sound eloquent or confident what you have to do is end the sentence on a low pitch note so that people that are listening to you can understand that it's a statement there's a full point afterwards so to give you a vivid example, instead of saying, I don't like this proposal, which is a high pitch note, I say, I don't like this proposal. That's a low pitch note. You see, the message was the same. What I said was the same. My voice sounds the same, but the way I ended the last word, in the first example, it was in a high pitch note, almost questioning myself, not sure if I felt that way. And the second one, I just lowered the pitch of the, my voice and that made it sound confident i knew what i was talking about i know what my feelings are in order to be a confident elegant speaker you have to know when to end the sentence on a low pitch note you can have the softest the you know sweetest voice out there but if you are the someone who speaks and ends the sentence on a low pitch note i guarantee you everyone will take you seriously this is very common to women uh, where they end their sentences with saying do you know what I mean? And that goes as well with the ending the sentence on a high pitch note. Whenever you say something, unless of course you're amongst your friends and you want to know their opinion, do not end the sentence with, do you know what I mean? It undermines whatever message you said before. Keep that in mind. Tip number five is speak less than more. I know a lot of my female clients have been telling me that whenever they get nervous or excited and you know they're meeting their boss or some important client they tend to blabber they tend to rant and they can't stop themselves it's a very common thing a lot of people have that and in order to stop that you have to put conscious effort what I suggest doing whenever you feel nervous and you feel like ranting what you do is take a mental break think and count to 10 in your mind. So if you feel the urge to say something, take a pause, count to 10 and think, do you still want to say something? If you no longer want, just keep silent. If you still want to say something, then say something because you will never really regret a silence. You'll definitely regret your rant. Silence is golden and anything that you say after taking that little break, this little silence pause, is much more important and much more powerful and magnified in its importance tip number six and i think that goes without saying is get rid of any curse words any swear words any uh, jargon that you have in your daily vocabulary if it's something that you were taught ever since you were younger or maybe something that people that you socialize with tend to have that kind of a vocabulary that include a lot of jargon try to get rid of it it takes a lot of conscious effort it doesn't happen overnight but you are your own filter and you're or your own best public speaker coach what you have to do is engage your mind where you're talking and try to take a pause whenever you feel like a swear word or jargon is trying to get out of your mouth take the silence break interrupt your conversation and then carry on along with this goes all kind of fillers that you might include in your speech like mm, um actually it has happened to me before as well because english was not my first language it is something that i learned uh, from childhood on but still i wasn't really thinking in english so i would include those fillers to take the time to find the right word to say something so if you are 
is an English speaker, a native English speaker, you probably don't have that problem as much. But if English is not your native language and you have been learning it and sometimes a word can escape you, it could happen that you are looking for some, you are saying some fillers in order to recall the word. If you catch yourself doing that, then instead of using the filler, try to take a pause, think of a word and then continue on. In any case, whenever you feel like you're about to slur something, say something that you'll regret, take a pause. Tip number seven is do not interrupt. Do not interrupt and do not let others interrupt you. Interrupting others is in your absolute control. You're the one who decides if you want to say something where other people are talking. When you're listening, be an active listener, not just listen in order to say something in return to put, give some kind of an input into their conversation. Let the person finish their thought and then you'll add something if you have to add something. But what happens when someone interrupts you? It's not in your control, you can't do anything about it. But there is a technique that you can incorporate in order to make sure that you are heard and you don't allow other people to interrupt you. And that is to simply carry on talking while the person that has interrupted you is still talking. You don't have to pay attention to what they're saying. You just continue your speech in the same pace, in the same volume as you did before. There is no need to increase your volume to over speak that person because that will show to the other person that you're doing it intentionally. You're trying to over speak them. What you have to do is keep on at the same pace and volume and just keep on saying what you have to say until you finish your point. Again, this might sound counterintuitive and you think, how do I continue talking while the person that has interrupted me is speaking? You just go on with your message. And what would happen in this case is either the person that has interrupted you will stop talking because they see that you're still carrying on with your point or the people that are listening to you will make a conclusion that you simply ignored the person who interrupted you and you carried on with what you had to say. So that's a very confident look. Tip number eight is using confident body language. An eloquent, a confident and elegant speaker is the one who not only speaks with their verbal message, but also communicates with their body, body language, hand movement, tone of the voice, everything, everything that is not part of the verbal message is part of the body language and non-verbal communication. So as much as you pay attention to what you say, you have to pay attention to how you say it. And body language is crucial. In order to translate a confident body language, your posture should be open, your shoulders rolled backwards and downwards, your chest area open, your hands are visible to the listener or to the people that you're talking to, uh, maybe a crowd, an audience, that you are confident in what you say, that you have nothing to hide. If you are delivering a speech in front of a crowd on a stage or perhaps in a lecture hall to students or whatever your profession might be, doing a presentation in front of your boss and clients, what you have to do is make sure that you use the stage to your own benefit. What I mean by that is do not get glued to one spot. Make sure that you walk on the stage and use that space to talk to every segment of the audience and that will make the listeners feel like you are reaching out to them individually in segments and also translates into confidence that you are relaxed enough to walk and give the speech. Whatever you do, never turn your back on the audience or your clients when you're doing a presentation. Make sure that most part of your face and your body is towards them. Speaking of a body language, an important part is using hand gestures accordingly and appropriately that will help magnify and amplify your verbal message. Hand gestures are important and they should be included in your speech, in your mannerism, because it can help you communicate the message much better and much more powerfully. And interesting, I was watching Eat, Pray and Love for my Etiquette Movie Club on my Patreon page and there is a segment where Julie Roberts is in a barber shop and the Italian barber tells her that we Italians, we not only speak with our mouth but we also speak with our body and hand and gestures. And she was so fascinated by it that she started learning the Italian gestures and what they meant. 
and when you learn that you have to be careful that some gestures could be appropriate for some culture and might be frowned upon another you have to be mindful of the gestures that you incorporate but there are some general gestures that are accepted across culturally so the most important is having your palms visible open like that when you talk without pointing fingers but keeping your fingers together while you talk and actually a huge chunk of neurolinguistic psychology is including hand gestures that would help understand your message better so sometimes imagine you have to watch someone on a mute or if you have volume really down you can't really hear what they're saying but with their hands you can understand what they're trying to say so if i gesture up it means increase go up or go away if i go like this it can mean down decrease so when i talk if i say decrease and i point like this the audience the listener will understand but better because what i say and what i show is all integral and that way the message is even more amplified when it's seen and heard Politicians get a huge masterclass on this particular segment of using their right hand gestures in order to make them look more eloquent, more confident as speakers. And one of the best examples of doing that is Obama. He has mastered this science or this art of using hand gestures in order to make his message more powerful. You can take a look at some of his public speeches and understand what I'm talking about. The final tip for today's video is speak in front of a mirror or film yourself while you're talking thank god we live in an era where everyone has a phone where they can film themselves talking just naturally maybe having a conversation you could record yourself or try to give a speech as if you're talking to your boss your client your student your teacher film yourself pay attention to your tone of your voice to the volume of your voice to the pitch that you're using when you're talking, to your gestures, your body movements, and try then to sit down and analyze what is something that you really like about your speech and what are some things that you would like to improve and work on more. Then do a conscious effort on a daily basis to incorporate the habits that you want or the tone of the voice that you want, the volume that you want, and make it work to your own benefit. No one is going to be a better public speaker, speaking teacher to you than you yourself because you see your own conversation on a daily basis. You can note it with your friends, you can note it with your family, you can ask them to give feedback to you so you know what are some things that you need to concentrate on. And most importantly, practice, practice, practice. The more you do, the more whatever you're learning is becoming a part of your second nature. And then you won't even have to put any conscious effort into trying to control your speech, trying to bring down the volume of your speech or not using any curse words or um, lowering down perhaps the, uh, the speed of your speech. So what you have to do right now, if you're struggling into work on work in one of these areas, you have to put conscious effort into that. It has to be a mental exercise for you to take a pause anytime you feel like ranting, anytime you feel like using the jargon, anytime you feel like speaking very, very loudly. But once you've managed to control it, over time, it's going to be who you are naturally as a speaker. So practice and incorporate all these tips that I've mentioned today, and I'm sure you're going to be an elegant, eloquent, and confident speaker. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please mention down below in the comment section what are some of your favorite tips from this video or perhaps it's generally what you've heard from people around you. And I'll be more than happy to read your comments and your feedbacks. And of course, always do let me know what are some video suggestions that you have for me. I love reading your suggestions. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!